Um, it's not very normal for people to invite project managers to talk at tech conferences, so thank you to the organizers for letting me come here and talk to you. Um, so I will say this is probably going to be the least technical of the presentations you're going to see today. Um, so I had to put the not equal stuff into my title so that I would get chosen. So. Um, <laughs> also tech adjacent, but work with developers. So um, I'm going to start here. So this is a face I make pretty frequently in Zoom calls. I'm sure you've seen it before. Probably when you're calling a product manager a project manager um, or a PO or who knows, whatever else, or handing them your shopping list of things you want. So I make this pretty frequently, not always for the same cases, um, but I know this was a face I made toward my boss um, a couple years ago when he said, hey, uh, product manager Kylie, you're going to be moving into a program manager role. I was like, what's a program manager? What's going to change about my job? Are you making me a scrum master? I love scrum masters, love what they do, not the job for me. So um, I had a ton of questions. He sent me a link to an article that was written by Product Board um, that kind of compared program and product. That didn't really answer all of my questions. Um, he then said, you're already doing the job. Keep doing what you're doing. Also didn't answer my questions. Um, and then he also said, you're not going to be a scrum master. And I was like, thanks. Um, but I still had a ton of questions and a ton of things that I wanted to understand. So I did what um, I assume all great engineers do and the great engineers that I work with uh, see. I talked to Google, tried to figure out what was going on, um, tried to see if there's some content out there that I could read um, or any sort of direction to go there. Um, a few years ago when I did this, I wasn't satisfied with what was out there. That's changed a lot in the last year. There's a lot of people creating a lot of content now, uh, but at the time I was not satisfied with the answers I was getting. So I decided to do my own research and I'm gonna share some of that with you today. So what did I do? Um, I reviewed, uh, so many job postings. So everything I could find in LinkedIn, everything I could find in Indeed, looking through my own company and the companies that I had worked at before to try and understand what the differences between these roles were. I also talked to every PM that I know and all of their friends. So I talked to probably close to 100 people, which doesn't sound like a whole lot, but when you're having like interviews via Zoom or Google Meet, um, it tends to be a lot. So um, talked to a lot of people, and then I read as much as I could. I checked out as many books from my library that I could find. Um, I looked at every article I could find. I talked to half of the people in our organization who used to work at Microsoft and kind of knew a little bit about program management. So um, I did a few things there. So I also learned some things from all of this research, and that's that all PMs are not alike. Program managers, project managers, and product managers have different roles, and I'm going to take you through that today. The roles are really inconsistent. So a product manager in one company is going to be different than a product manager in another company. I don't really know how to fix that, um, so I'm at least going to point it out. And then all of this is way more complicated than it actually seems. So. Um, it's really hard to kind of navigate the job space here in this area because the definition is so hard to, to kind of find. So what we're going to do is we're going to go through projects, programs, and products, talk about what they are, the job responsibilities that I found from the people I talked to, um, and then also how they work with development teams. Um, and then what kind of titles you might see out in the market space for that same role. I will say I work in software development, so that's going to be my focus, which works great because that's what this audience is today. So um, know that there are other places that these roles exist too. So first we're going to start talking about projects, and I'm just going to talk through a little bit of what a project is. So a project is a temporary effort to create value through a re ooh, unique result, service, or product. So projects are very time-based. They have a defined start date and a defined end date. Um, so you always kind of know when that thing's going to end, even if your end date shifts a little bit. Um, so 
they are going to have a defined team. Uh, a project will always have a defined team, a defined budget, um, even if that changes. Um, and they're also going to have a defined scope of what they're looking for. So, people that manage projects are called project managers. They have several responsibilities, but really what they're, what they're tasked with doing is breaking down bigger initiatives into tangible tasks that teams can work on. Uh, they also will work on resourcing, so looking at time, budget, and people. Um, and then they also maintain and organize those budgets and timelines for uh, the various teams that they're working with. And then um, maybe one of the more important things is being able to monitor and track those and then communicate that information out to the various parties that are interested in that. Collaboration, so generally project managers are assigned to a particular project team. So they'll work with one team, or if they're assigned to multiple projects, they'll work with multiple teams. Um, they'll work with other project managers to talk about dependencies, talk about when to start things, when to end things. And they partner with their program and product manager friends um, to be able to report that information up, which we'll talk about those more in a minute. Some other titles, for the most part, PM is pretty uh, consistent with project managers, um, though that's not always the case. Um, if you work in like a scrum shop, sometimes a product owner can be a similar title. There may be a couple of additional responsibilities, but those skill sets transfer what, relatively well. Business analysts also sometimes get used as project managers as well. Uh, scheduler came up a few times with a few people that I talked to. I've never seen that in real life, but um, that's out there in the LinkedIn world. Um, and then if you happen to work in SAFE, release train engineers also can be project managers. So I uh, wanted to put together just a couple of things. We're going to actually use these pictures a lot today, so don't think that we're going to have a whole lot of words on this presentation. So um, what project managers really are um, are a bunch of things, but they really work well on communication. So to be a really good project manager, uh, communication is going to be key. So how you talk to people, what, like how you kind of talk to your audience is important. Um, not allowed to use profanities here, so get, getting stuff done uh, <laughs> is super important. So working with your team to deliver on those projects that you're assigned to. Um, that is one of the key, key points of a project manager. Um, they're also problem solvers, so they work with a development team, work with QA to uh, come up with solutions to problems in their business. Um, and then they may not necessarily be the one pushing out the code, but they're definitely help, helping solve problems and making sure that developers have what they need to be successful. They're very project focused, so instead of looking across the company sometimes, Project managers tend to focus a lot more on the actual projects they're working on. So they get to be very knowledgeable in that space. They're also output driven. So they're looking at what is the team getting accomplished? They're looking a lot at velocity. Uh, they're looking a lot at tickets being closed, how long tickets are staying open, um, and really focusing on what's being delivered from the teams that they're on. They also spend a lot of time on resourcing. So looking at that budget, looking at the time that's being spent on the items that are being built, um, and then also who's working on that, and trying to help make decisions if something needs to change. They also tend to be short-term owners of a problem space. So when you think about a project, it has a start and an end date. When the project ends, ideally the project manager moves off and goes to another project. So they tend to have a shorter-term ownership of that problem space. And they're more tactical in nature. So they're looking at how to make something happen. They're looking at, my text looks really weird up there. That's awesome. Uh, <laughs> I promise you that's not what it looks like in my design. So it's awesome. Uh, so uh, please don't judge me for that. I promise I'm not that bad. <laughs> um, so also very tactical. Um, so they're looking at how do I actually accomplish this thing and what are the steps to do that. So now we're going to hop into program managers or programs. Um, I, I will say this is the one I actually started this research on, so um, I learned this along the way. So a program is actually a set of projects that are organized to achieve a strategic objective. 
So generally, actually, I'm not even going to say generally all the time. A program should be a grouping of projects that those projects individually are not going to have the same outcome as if you put them together. So from a business perspective, they want, like, your business owners are going to want a bigger set of objectives or outcomes for their company. Um, and how that gets accomplished is through multiple projects that you kind of lump together into a, pro a program. So programs, at the end of all of this, how you kind of uh, measure success on those is really through what outcome was achieved by the business. So responsibilities of a program manager. So they are actually like really kind of owners of operationalizing those strategic plans. So they don't necessarily manage multiple projects, but they oversee the multiple projects that are being worked on and delivering and sorry, reporting all of those results up into their program statuses. So uh, a lot of this kind of work is really dependency mapping um, and tracking those, reporting those, and communicating that. Um, so they tend to work across teams. So when you get to collaboration, um, most program managers should be assigned to a program. So they're not necessarily going to be working with a singular development team. They're going to be looking at multiple teams and tracking their work. Um, they generally get that information from project managers that are assigned to the individual teams. Uh, I will say I work for a smaller company, so I manage projects that are related to my programs as well. Uh, and they'll also partner with product managers to be able to help those product managers achieve the goals of their product. Some other titles here. Program manager is a funny one um, just because it exists in some places like Amazon and Microsoft and I think Facebook has them too. Um, but you may also see them as a portfolio manager, a strategic project manager, or more likely, and please don't send me a bunch of Slack messages because I totally understand, um, product managers tend to have job descriptions that meet program manager roles. So um, if you're looking at a product management role um, and it has a lot about dependency tracking and project management, you're probably looking at a program manager role. So who are program managers? Um, they tend to be internally focused, so business focused. They're trying to achieve business objectives. They're also really awesome communicators. Um, I will probably say this about five more times. 80% uh, of all of these jobs is communication. So being able to send information to people, you're really that go-between between tech or your dev team uh, and your business partners. So communication becomes extremely important. Also, GSD mentality. So. Also working toward making sure you're getting as much, getting the things done that need to be done and helping the team as much as possible. Uh, program managers tend to be longer term owners of their problem space. So they're looking at uh, how can I achieve this objective and then how do I continue to maintain that objective? So if you're looking at business strategy and you're looking to like increase increase the usage of some, a certain application internally, um, then you wouldn't just give that up once you finish all of the dev work. So program managers get to keep their space for a lot longer, um, and that's al always a lot of fun. Um, also, they're problem solvers, just like project managers. I personally like the program space a lot because I get to identify problems in our business, and I get to help define the solutions with my team. So uh, program managers kind of get to be that nice in between, um, but I have them listed as problem solvers because they do a lot more of the execution um, than what we'll see with product managers. As far as drivers, um, program managers are really looking at outcomes. So they're looking at what outcomes have been achieved, what outcomes have been delivered, what outcomes do we need to look at next, um, and trying to help um, define those. For anyone who's not working in a place that talks about outcomes, outcomes are a measurable change in behavior that you can like make with your company or with your users. It, it, it's helpful. 
So um, also for program managers, they do deal with resourcing. It's a little bit different than in a project management world uh, because you're really looking at what teams are going to be helping with this particular outcome. Um, so you are looking a little bit higher level, which then leads into this last trait here, which is program managers work more at the strategy level. Um, so they're, they're thinking strategically about how do I solve a problem or what problems do I need to solve? Um, and then helping to kind of get down to that tactical level. So they're also kind of a little bit in the middle. So now we're gonna drop into product managers and products. So product is a fun one. Um, so <laughs> product is a good or a service that makes the purpose of the company tangible. So customers use their agency to choose you, to choose your product, to choose your mission. Um, and they do that because they have some visceral reaction to what you're providing to them. So um, that doesn't mean that you're necessarily exchanging money. Um, you can opt into a product for free, um, but it does mean that you have made a choice as a customer to go and do something with the product that you see. So product managers. It's the most fun. Uh, they have a ton of responsibilities and I can't possibly list them all here, um, but they're definitely the champion of their product. They're the knowledge base for their product. They know, they should know everything about it. Um, their, their job is really to define and evangelize that product vision. So looking at what they actually want to do and achieve long-term with that. Um, so how they kind of do that and, and kind of get from vision down to execution is by prioritizing a roadmap, a product roadmap. So this isn't a release plan, this isn't a timeline, this is really a list of things that are going to help achieve your vision. I'm not ready for that yet. Um, how do they do this? Um, they look at a lot of data like a ton of data. So I have customer insights listed here. There's also market insights, there's team insights, there's company insights, there's industry insights, um, all the insights. Um, and then they take all that, kind of put it together, make a prioritized roadmap. Um, obviously this is me totally brushing over how much work that actually takes. Um, and then they work with a whole bunch of teams to get that out into the market. So they could be going into the market to be able to uh, test something out. Um, I will say as a product manager, my whole job was to get things out into the market so that I could find out if it was actually working. Um, and then if it was, do more. Um, but that's definitely part of a product manager's role. As far as collaboration with a team, um, product managers are generally assigned to a product or multiple products, um, so they kind of live outside of a development team, but there are plenty of places that actually have product development teams um, where a product manager gets to work directly with a team to bring their product to life. Um, so I would say in where I'm at, I, we, our product managers work with multiple teams to accomplish their goals. Um, and then they partner with program managers and project managers, um, specifically to kind of make sure that their product is being represented in the way that they're expecting from their vision and tracking work. So some other titles, I feel like I'm gonna get more messages about these, but um, there's generally, if somebody is looking for a true product manager, they get the title right. Um, but that's not always the case. Um, so uh, there's a lot of like kind of a relationship between tech product and marketing product. So um, a lot of times you'll see some product management titles in product marketing managers, marketing managers, um, and then product development is its own thing sometimes. Um, but all of them could be a product management role. So who are product managers? Uh, they're also expert communicators because that's 80% of the job. Uh, their focus is completely on their customer. So most decisions made by a product manager has the customer voice in mind. Um, very often in the industry, uh, product managers are considered the voice of the customer, and I agree with that. Um, 
they also have GSD. So um, I don't know that I've ever met a product manager that wasn't like completely on board with trying to do whatever they needed to to get something out to their users. Um, again, obsessed with their customers. So they're driven a lot by KPIs. So KPIs can be really interesting um, depending on what kind of product you're working on. Um, so I know some of, the, some of the KPIs that a lot of people use, especially when you're selling something out into uh, the world, um, I know I work in, the ser like in services, so um, we tend to look at things like NPS scores, retention, churn. There's probably like 50 other things that we actually look at, but those are the most important ones. Um, and a lot of companies look at those as well. Uh, these product managers are long-term owners of their problem space. They're not generally shifting products unless their product goes away, um, but they would run that through the entire product market life cycle. They're also looking at priorities, so working a lot on prioritization, understanding those frameworks, um, if a company uses those, and doing a lot of work to keep that roadmap prioritized and talk to anyone and everyone that asks for additional features why they can't have them. Uh, problem finders, <laughs> so uh, a lot of product managers, they're really digging into their data. Um, they're looking at specifically for opportunities and problems and then being able to elevate that higher so that other teams can start seeing that and start figuring out ways to solve those problems. And lastly, also strategic minded. So they're looking at a bigger picture. They're looking at all the pieces of the puzzle and trying to figure out how to put them together. So we've gone through all of those, hopefully in a short amount of time. Uh, so now we can start talking about some comparisons. I'm super excited. So uh, I made some Venn diagrams because <laughs> that's what I do. Um, so first we're going to talk about some comparisons between project managers and program managers. So like I said, we're going to see these illustrations a lot. There's no more names on here, so that's good. My text shouldn't be too bad anymore. Um, but we're going to start with project and program. So project managers, like I said earlier, they're like more tactical in nature, where program managers are more strategic. So program managers are looking at that bigger picture and then working with project managers to figure out the tactics to actually make that happen. As far as focus, uh, program managers are looking at the business, business stakeholders, where that's all kind of at. They usually have like a really huge list of stakeholders that they have to work with and make happy. Um, where project managers, while they still have a lot of stakeholders, um, they get to be a little bit more limited in scope because they're looking down at the actual project. As far as drivers, Project managers are looking at outputs. So they're looking at what the team's doing, how that's going, reporting out on those types of things. Where a program manager is looking more at outcomes. So what changes in behavior have we actually accomplished? Whoopsies. And then timeframes, so short-term ownership of a problem um, lives in the project space and program is looking at longer term uh, ownership of a problem space. As far as things that they have in common, uh, they both work in resourcing, though that can vary. Um, they both have that GSD attitude, um, which is going to be on all three, so I should probably stop saying that so much. Um, and then uh, they're also problem solvers, so they're working with teams, they're working with other people to really solve those problems that have been identified either by them or by somebody else. And then expert communicators, 80% of the job. So. Now we'll go into program and product. This is the one that um, is the most common, or most alike. There, that's the right word. Uh, but they also have differences. So um, if you think about a program manager internally focused, they're looking at their business. They're trying to make um, decisions and find objectives that help the business with their goals. Where a product manager is going to be totally focused on the customer. So sometimes customer interests and business interests are not the same thing. Um, in that case, there needs to be a fight, and it's a lot of fun. Um, as far as drivers, program managers are going to be looking at those outcomes and trying to um, get the best change of behavior that they possibly can that will bring the most value to the company. So that value isn't always necessarily more sales. Sometimes it's 
decreasing the cost of something by making it more efficient. Sometimes it's investing in internal tools, which we kind of talked about earlier, um, because that makes our, our CSRs more efficient. Um, so those are some outcomes that a program manager would be looking at. Product managers are gonna be focused on their product KPIs. Whatever those KPIs are, um, that's what they're gonna be using to track progress. That's what they're gonna be using to track success. As far as problem space, you've got product managers, which are those problem finders, those opportunity finders, uh, and program managers can do that too. Uh, but they also spend, get to spend time in that solution as well. And then kind of some last things as far as what they can kind of do there. Um, product managers are really looking at prioritization. They're looking at what is the most important thing? Um, what is going to bring the most value to my product? Where a program manager is really gonna be looking at resourcing and making sure that they have the right staff in place to be able to make those things happen. As far as things that they have like, both strategic, they both look at the bigger picture of what's happening in the company and um, do their best to make that happen, um, which goes into GSD stuff again. Uh, they're definitely looking at how can I make this thing and what do I need to do to help. Um, I, yeah, uh, and then long-term, they're long-term owners of their problem space, so they're looking at things they're not going to be moving around um, as frequently, uh, but they could move around if they need to. And then expert communicators, 80% of the job, by the end of this, I hope that you at least grasp that it's 80% of the job. <laughs> um, so, as far as comparisons here, this is where there's the most difference, at least between the traits that we were kind of looking at here. So, from a product perspective, strategic in nature, project managers, more tactical. Product managers, KPI, KPI driven, they're looking at the KPIs for their product, where Project managers are gonna be more output driven. So they're actually gonna report their outputs to those product managers if they're working on something to help drive product vision. Um, those product managers, customer focused, and that's what they're looking at. That's where, what they use to kind of guide decisions. Project managers are gonna make decisions based on the project that they're working on. Prioritization, super important for a product manager. While not, in, while not completely unimportant to a project manager, they're gonna be focusing much more on resourcing and sequencing of events. Um, as far as ownership of the problem space, you're looking at long-term for product and short-term for project. And then, much like on the last one, product managers are those problem finders where project managers are helping them solve those problems. And the two common traits in all of them, which is, getting things done and helping their team and supporting them as much as they can and being able to communicate that out, whether it's successful or failed or anything in between. So we've gone through all that and we're almost done. Yay. Uh, so what do, what do you do with this information? There's a lot there um, and you may think it's not important and that's okay. Uh, but there's a couple of ideas to kind of build on here, which is, it's really cool to understand each role. Um, I will say you're probably not ever gonna find a true product manager role where you don't have to manage a project or two. Um, just like I'm never gonna find a program manager role where I don't have to do project management as much as I would love that. I love project managers. It can get a little tedious sometimes. So um, being able to understand what hat you're kind of wearing at any time can become extremely important. I know I use this a lot um, when I'm doing my program work, um, only because if I feel like I'm spending too much time in project management, then I'm not being able to get up high enough to look at my programs. And product is the same way. If you're spending so much time in like building timelines or managing budgets, then you're not spending time with your customers and you're not spending time looking a little bit higher. Second is to be flexible. Um, again, as much as I would love to say that out there you could just spend your time in the clouds looking at the strategic priorities for your company, at some point you have to execute. Um, and that's not going to happen if you don't know how to get down to an execution level. So um, I know when I need to be a project manager, I know when I need to be a product manager. Um, and you're not going to necessarily know that 
uh, on a piece of paper, but when you're in the actual scenario where you need to go and do something to move your team ahead, um, it's always important to be able to kind of shift between the three. So, hey, maybe I convinced somebody in this audience to want to go and find a role in a PM world, whichever one you want to be in. Um, a couple things that you could really look at. Um, some skills to grow, I guess is what I'm trying to say here, because that's what's on the slide. Um, looking at analysis, so um, data is super important for all three of these roles. Um, I, I can't emphasize enough how important it is to be able to tell a story using data. Um, it becomes so much more valuable when you're talking to your stakeholders, especially in a prioritization conversation, to be able to give them actual numbers saying, here's how many people canceled last month or here's how many people are coming to our website and not making it all the way through the funnel, and what's the page that they're getting stuck on so that we can figure out and prioritize the pages that we want to actually get out there. Second is communication. It's 80 percent of the job. So uh, communication is super important. Being able to understand audiences and know different ways to communicate with them is super important. Um, I will say I hate building Gantt charts. It's the worst. It's not the way that I like to talk about things. But you know who loves Kant charts? My CEO. <laughs> and he pays for me to do stuff for them. So I'll make a Gantt chart for him. That doesn't mean I like it, and I'll complain about it to my boss, but I won't tell anybody else, although they're watching, so <laughs> they know now. <laughs> But definitely looking at communication, learning how to communicate effectively, um, figuring out like what works best for your audience and then being really flexible about that. Um, it sounds like a lot of work and it is a lot of work. That's why it's 80% of the job. That's the last time I'm gonna say that. Um, negotiation and prioritization. I did not realize when I got into this role that I would actually spend most of my time talking to people about what they can't have um, without saying no, which is sometimes hard. Uh, so maybe not right now, maybe later, or really being able to negotiate and talk about uh, sorry, trade-offs that kind of come in there um, is really important. So um, also maybe being able to kind of whittle down that MVP a little bit um, in order to allow our team to go on vacation or to take a break or you're just being unreasonable sometimes. Um, and then we've already talked about prioritization. There's a ton of frameworks out there and I'm more than happy to share some that I've used. Um, I will say I don't use a standard one. We just kind of score some things based on, again, I'm working in program management, so sequencing of events that need to get done to accomplish an outcome. And lastly, industry knowledge. Uh, I can't emphasize this one enough. I'm at a tech conference today and I do not code. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, I will say I learned very little about front-end development when I worked on a website, um, and it was because I wanted to be able to code my own tests so that my developers could focus on building the sites that I needed them to build. Uh, so learning that was super valuable. Being able to speak the same language as the developers that I work with, also extremely valuable. I know, I, I don't work in web anymore, I work in back-end uh, back platform at that, but. Um, I know that when somebody's talking about JSON, I know what they're talking about, and I know the structure of the database that makes that. So um, it's really important to be able to understand the industry that you're in, but not even just the development side. What does your company do? What do they sell? Where are they? I work in legal services. I knew nothing about legal services before I started working there. But it's important to understand what our customers are facing and what my CEO is going to be asking for next. So I hope that here at the end, we have all realized that all PMs are not alike. I'm going to just put these up here. So project managers are going to be those short-term, project-focused, output-driven people. Program managers are long-term focus, business-focused, and outcome-driven and product managers are long-term, customer-focused, and KPI-driven. So, 
Thank you so much for listening to me today.